Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me here on this video today. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to use standard deviation to help you make better options trades. But before we get into that, I'd like to welcome back all of my subscribers. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And if this is your very first time here, my name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading. And we make videos just like this on a consistent basis where we talk about the stock market and options trading. If you'd like to learn more, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so that you don't miss out on any future updates. Let's just jump right into it, you guys. We're talking about standard deviation, how we can use it to make better options trades. What is standard deviation? Well, standard deviation simply is a number used to tell how measurements for a group are spread out from the average mean or expected value. So just know that if you have a high standard deviation, that those numbers are gonna be far apart. And if you have a low standard deviation, those numbers are gonna be close together or closer to that average. So what is this symbol right here? Well, this is the standard deviation symbol. Why did I throw this slide in here, guys? I just wanted you to feel smart when you look at this next graph here because right along the bottom here, you can see our standard deviations. We have one, two, and three standard deviations represented on this standard deviation table. Well, what does that mean? Well, a one standard deviation, which is measured by looking at this little point right here from one standard deviation here to the other side here, this is gonna collect 68.2% of all data inputs. So if we're measuring something, uh, that one standard deviation is gonna capture or encompass 68.2% of all the data that's collected. Now, if we go out to the two standard deviation, talking about right out here at this two standard deviation line, this is gonna capture 95.4% of all data uh, that we capture. So well that makes sense right the farther we go out from that mean that's going to capture more data now if we go out to that three standard deviation that's going to capture about 99.7 percent of all inputs so that that makes sense the farther we go out the most of the inputs are going to fall within that range now we're going to have a few that are going to be outliers now if we're talking about stocks uh, that would be like you know a one-time event where the stock went to zero uh, we had a, a black swan event in the market, something that nobody was expecting. You know, maybe the company went bankrupt and the stock went down to zero. Those are going to fall in that uh, fall outside those three standard deviation moves. So let me show you guys an example here what I'm talking about. So if you guys ever go to the range and you're target practicing and you're trying to hit a bullseye, let's say, for example, you're shooting right here at the middle and you're going to get most of your most of your uh, shots are going to be right there in that middle range but if you you know you're going to have some outliers so for example uh you're out there shooting you're out there target practicing and 68.2 percent as we know is going to fall in that one standard deviation range so let's say for example that this area right here represents that that uh one standard deviation range so this would be encompass 68.2 percent of all of our outcomes so you can see that that that's about right right i mean you can look at you can look at that target there and see that most of the data that's collected or most of those shots fell in that 68.2 percent range now if we go out to that two standard deviation range we're going to pick up a few more not so much more but i mean that's going to encompass about 95.4 percent of all the uh the input that was put into this target here now, if we go out to that three standard deviation range, of course, that's going to encompass almost 100% of our, of our inputs or our numbers in this case. And, you know, we're going to have those few outliers out here that are going to represent like that 0.3%. So you can see just looking at this target here that this gives us a good idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about a one standard deviation range most of the input is going to fall within that one standard deviation range. So why is standard deviation so important? Well, here's the cool thing. When we're talking about stocks and predicting stock movement, this can really give us an idea of where that stock's gonna go because most of the time, it's gonna be within that one standard deviation range. And then we're gonna have some two standard deviation moves and some three standard deviation moves. And I'm gonna show you guys how to use this standard deviation to help you make better options trades. So the main and most important purpose of standard deviation is to understand how spread out a data set is. And if, like I said, when we're trading options, it can help us to pick the probabilities of how successful our trades are going to be. So 
looking at this chart right here, you can see that this is a uh, this is basically a stock chart just turned on end. And you can see we have the standard deviation cone here, the cone of probability, and I've added that onto the chart. So this would be this would represent that one standard deviation move on each side. Now we know that 68.2% of all data or all information is going to fall within that 68.2% range, correct? And you can see as I turn it here on the side, you can just gives, it's gives us a better idea of what I'm talking about here. So again, looking at this chart here, we can see that a 68.2% of all that data is going to fall right in here. So if this stock had a one standard deviation move, you can see that it's just going to trade right in this range here. And of course, we might have some moves that are going to, you know, go beyond that standard deviation and get that two standard deviation. But if this stock, for example, traded clear out here, you know, that's going to be that's going to be beyond that three standard deviation move or just outside of that three standard deviation move if it can continued up here. And those are going to be those outlier moves. But most of the time, a stock's going to trade right in here in this one standard deviation range. Now, this is really cool because when we're trading options, it can give us an idea of where to, to uh, sell our option strategies. Now, I like to sell options, and so I want those options to be out of the money. And if you guys are watching this video and you're learning about selling options and selling credit spreads, uh, you want to know where, where, uh, where, that, where the best opportunity is to sell those options so that your options don't come in the money. And here's what I like about it. So right now, we're looking at a stock of uh, XL, XLI. So XLI is uh, an industries ETF. That doesn't really matter, but it's, this could be any stock or ETF, right? So right now we're looking at this, this uh, cone of probability, and you can see that, that this uh, stock is gonna move somewhere in this range, you know, as it moves forward in time, it's gonna stay in that one standard deviation most of the time, 68.2% of the time to be exact. So if I was to sell options, where would I want to sell those options? Well, I'd want to sell them in a place where I know or I have a better probability that that stock is not going to touch my options. So for example, uh, you can see right here, we have the, the uh, monthly expiration lines on the chart here. So this would be like the October expiration. This would be the November expiration here. And if we're looking at where that stock or where that stock's predictability is or where it's going to be in the future, we can look at this one standard deviation move. And I'm going to show you guys how to add this to your chart. And you can actually, you know, if you want to be a little more conservative, you can set this cone at a 80% uh, or a 90% uh, probability of success. And you can put that out there and you can see where you can sell those options. But right now we're looking at a one standard deviation move. And so where would I want to sell my, sell my options at? So if I was selling a put credit spread, I would want to come out here and sell this put credit spread somewhere down here below, below the market, correct? And so if I was selling a put and then buying a put for protection, I'd want it to be below that 77 because I know that that 77 is about where that stock's going to be at expiration. And if we come a little bit farther out here in November expiration, you can see that that stock's going to be at that 75 0.65 is where that probability is for that uh, one standard deviation move. And you can see that as we go out in time, this one standard deviation move is going to get wider and wider, correct? Because it's it, given time, uh, it's given time that it's going to allow that stock to make bigger moves. And so let's take a look now at what I'm talking about on an options chain. So if we're looking back here on this chart, you can see that we wanted to sell our options or sell our credit spreads around that 77 mark or a little bit below that 77 mark and that would represent a one standard deviation move so what does a one standard deviation move look like on a probability chart so if you remember looking back here uh let me see if i can get get my chart back here so we got 34.1 percent so if you're if this mean line is 50 and we wanted to go out and have a probability of success and find out what this difference here is we would go out to about that 84 percent probability of a win because we're taking that 50 we're adding 34 percent to it so that'd be an 84 percent probability of a win so what do i mean by that if we go to the options chain here now again we're looking at that october expiration and if you remember when we were looking at that chart earlier you could we had the october expiration line on there and we also had the 
uh, November expiration line on there. And remember, it was telling us that that probability of that stock uh, being at or above 70, 77 was a, at that one standard deviation was, uh, was at 77. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, probability here, we're looking at 84%. So that one standard deviation move, that would put that stock or that we'd want to sell our options uh, at that 77 in order to be outside that one standard deviation move. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I don't know if that made sense the way I said that there. So going back here and looking at this chart, you can see that this stock has a has a uh, chance uh, if it stayed in that one standard deviation move to stay anywhere inside this range if it just were to trade in the one standard deviation move. So if we're looking at the October expiration, which is right here, this line right here, and then we have the November expiration, if we're selling options, we would want that option to be outside of that one standard deviation move. I think that I think I explained that a little bit better that way. So we want it to be outside that one standard deviation move so that that option will expire worthless because we sold that option and we don't want that option to go in the money. So if we go back here to our our chart, you can see that that 84.58% probability about the money would be that 50% plus the 34.1%. So if we're selling a put credit spread, we would come down here around that 77 strike and sell that 77 strike and then buy something for protection if we're doing a put credit spread. Now again, if we're looking, uh, looking farther out in the future, you can see that this uh, one standard deviation move in November would put us out here about $75.65. Now if we look at our options chain again, that would put it right here at $75 and that would be around that 84% probability of out of the money. So this right here would be a one standard deviation move. Now, here's the other cool thing. So uh, I want to uh, show you guys uh, a trade that we have right now on in TLT. Now, when we put this trade on, it was actually about the 80% probability of out the money, of being out of the money, but the stock has moved uh, lower and that option now, our call options, are now uh, showing 94% probability of being out of the money. And then this one's almost an, almost 100% of being out of the money. So these trades are looking really well for us right now. So we had, we sold a, uh, a couple of credit spreads here. And we were looking at, uh, you know, we sold them here at the 119 and we sold them at the 121. And the stock has since moved down, which now puts those probabilities higher for us. But when we first sold those, we knew what that probability was that it was going to be an 80% probability of a win because it was 80%, 84% probability that that stock was not going to touch our position. But what that means is there also, there's also a 15% probability that it could actually touch our position. So, you know, the farther out we go, obviously, we're going to take in less credit because we're taking in less risk. Now, I'd like to show you guys a spreadsheet that I have that can help you calculate standard deviation. And if you guys would like this spreadsheet, just send me a text or, I mean, not a text, but put a comment down on this uh, video down below here and I will send that to you. Give me some information of how to send that to you and I'll do it. So let's say, for example, we were looking at a, a stock and we wanted to know what the, the standard deviation was. So let's just say, for example, we were looking at, uh, you know, uh, let's go back to XLI or let's go back to let's do TLT. Let's just do TLT. So TLT right now uh, current price on TLT is about uh, 115 and implied volatility let's say is uh, 25% and we got uh, let's say 15 days till expiration. Now we're doing one contract. Let's just say we're doing one contract and the average strike gaps are going to be $1 wide. So you can see here that it's going to tell us what a one standard deviation move is. So one standard deviation move would be uh, $5. So we're talking about a $5 one standard deviation move. A one and a half standard deviation move would be $8. And a two standard deviation move would be $11. So if you're using this to do iron condors and you wanted to find out where to sell your, sell your puts and sell your calls, you could look right over here and it'll tell you if you wanted to do a one standard deviation 
uh, iron condor, you could sell your, your calls at 120 and sell your puts at 109. And if you wanted to do a two standard deviation move, you'd sell that at 127 on the call side and 103 on the put side. So I really like this spreadsheet. It just kind of gives you a, a quick example of you know how you can find those one standard deviation moves. Now, what I want to do, guys, is to show you how to add that standard or that uh, cone of probability in your in your Thinkorswim chart. So let, we just have a normal chart pulled up here on uh, on Thinkorswim. Now, let's say for example, you just wanted to add that cone of probability in here. You could just come in here and you write in, type in cone of probability or probability of expiring cone. Just double click on that, and you can see that right here. Here's the, here it is, and you can put this at whatever you want. So if you wanted a 68.2 or a one standard deviation range, you could totally just do that right here. Now, let's say you wanted to uh, maybe bump this up, and you wanted a probability range of 90. So you wanted a, you know, you wanted a 90% chance of selling your options outside the money. You could come in here and dial that in. But let's just say we're going to go back down here to that one standard deviation, and we're going to put it at that 68. Uh, 68 percent so we're gonna hit OK we hit apply and OK and you can see that right there it added that cone of probability on this chart so now you can see that where if you wanted to sell your uh, your uh, credit spreads and uh, you wanted to sell them before this October expiration you'd come in here and sell it below that 76 mark or if you're doing it for the November you'd come in here and you'd want to sell it below that 74 and if you wanted to sell a call credit spread you could come up here above 82 and then above 83 on the call side. So I thought that was really cool that you can add that in there and just get a visual of where you want that stock to be or where you need that stock to be or where, better put where you want your, where you want to sell your credit spreads based on that cone of probability. So guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you to understand standard deviation and where we can you know, where we want to sell those options at in order to make sure our options are expiring out of the money. And uh, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Again, I appreciate you watching my videos. I love making these videos. P please post your comments below. If you have any questions, also post those below. And uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. We really appreciate it. And if you think anybody can benefit from this, go ahead and share this video with them. My name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading. We'll catch you next time, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye.